and record. Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. All right. And we'll keep you on the side. We'll, we're going to we'll spotlight Bora and myself and keep you on the background until we pull you in, if that's okay. That way you can just relax for a second. Perfect. I okay. Myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Here we go. Let's spotlight this guy. Stop video. Spotlight for everyone and spotlight for everyone. Add spotlight. Perfect. All right. Good stuff. And we have 36. All right. Welcome, everybody. It's great to see you, folks. Welcome, welcome. Boy, busy time on the po political space. If you're, uh, I just got my ballot. I'm very excited. By the way, everybody vote. This is I'm recorded. I want you all to vote. I want you all to exercise your your rights, folks. This is very important. So make sure you do that. Be we're going to remind you every week. We're going to remind you every week. Um, yes, and, and and be informed. Like read up on the ballots. Look on look on that. Right. There's, there's lots of I mean propositions. I mean look on the propositions on the ballot. Make sure you understand that, Craig. We have these propositions which are kind of you know, uh, uh, any, any any citizen can put a proposition forward and it becomes law if enough people vote for it. So yep. I grew up in California. Yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah. All right. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I, uh, yeah, Prop 13, I got yeah. my, my ballot last Friday or so. Yeah, definitely. And in fact, I spent, I spent uh, like three hours with my fr best friend who lives in California. We, we just went through every single one and we marked out and we talked about it and we fought. It was great, really great. Do that, do that kind of thing. All right, let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week eight, once a week lecture, risk five data path control and pipelining. Woo! <laughs> great to see everybody here. All wonderful, right. wonderful. All right. Uh, let's go, let's get started. So here's our agenda. Uh, we're going to do as we always welcome to week eight. We'll do a little computing the news. We have a wonderful guest, a colleague and friend, Craig Zillis from University of Illinois, Urbana Champaign, is going to join us in a moment or two. Then we'll talk about our week's plan and any, uh, we have some information about the upcoming exam. I'm sure you want to care about that, but we'll let Craig take our leave after we, after we get yeah. uh, done with that. Yeah. All right. Important uh, thing. We are past the midpoint. We are past the midpoint yes. of, the, of the class. Exactly. Uh, it's all just downhill from now. I love it. <laughs> I love it. No, it really is. It is. It's, 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 it's like my, you know, I'm over 50, Bora. I think you are too. So it's like, just like our lives. Exactly. Just downhill, <laughs> just coasting, put it in neutral, let my Tesla recharge. <laughs> Perfect. I just got it. I got it there. Uh, computing in the news. All right. All right. Computing in the news. Um, Waymo. So we, you know that Google split um, from Google to all of its different versions, A through Z, I think they call about it. And Waymo was one of them. Uh, and for a while they were having these little teeny kind of a mini, let's like a VW minivan, but a much smaller version that had no steering wheel and they were doing test drives around Mountain View. They went a little bit bigger uh, and they went to Arizona where the roads are really wide and there are a lot of people running around like New York City or a big city and very slow and soft kind of a, Kind of a space they did they did all this test prep for this and in fact i just read on the article the article's linked here from bloomberg um when people were doing these beta testing drives they were you know riding in this way more cars that had no users for a while they had you know a, a person there with their hands on the wheel just making sure then for a while they actually had nobody there this is when beta test mode just to see if it worked really amazing and people, everybody riding in those cars during beta test mode had to sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, saying <laughs> if the car ride is terrible and it stops ear, 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 every two seconds, they won't complain, they won't post on social media. Like they literally had to silence, it's like a silence clause they had everybody do. I mean, they certainly asked them to give feedback for you know how did it go and blah blah blah. They they're ready. They launched. Can you believe it? The future is here, folks. I mean, Elon Musk keeps telling me my Tesla will be able to drive me from here to there without my hands on. I mean, hands on the wheel still, but like on roads, my doesn't even, it only does highway. So this is it. Look, they've got the system in, in Arizona. I think there are, I think, three or 500 cars or so. It's still small, still small scale, but they've got cars that have no driver. This is unbelievable. This is like Disneyland or Fairyland. So I, I, I think, I, I would hope that people who are using these, these cars will, you know, you know, sh share some video, high def, uh, you know, iPhone video of here's me getting a car. There's no driver. Look, ah, we're driving around. I cannot wait. So exciting, exciting. I hope, I wish everybody safety. I certainly wish for this to succeed, but I mean, it's here. Future is here. All thanks to LIDAR, sensors, crazy machine learning. And the same thing we talked about last week, Bora. We talked about this last week or the week before. These high-end 
these high-end machine learning systems, they are built into these systems. That's how they work. It really is the key to, thanks to all the hardware advances that we've talked about. And, 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 and thanks to a whole bunch of our alumni who went there. Uh, I mean, the, the, the chief architect of this is uh, uh, Pierre, Pierre Yves Draws, um, who, who got the master's from Berkeley. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. Uh, so, and a bunch of other people who just right. went through, through uh, uh, as our alumni after just taking classes, uh, some of them uh, with the advanced degrees, some of them with bachelor's degrees and just made all of that. Yeah. Exciting. Exciting space. Right. Same time to be here. Wonderful. All right. Let's keep on going. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce our guest of the day, Professor Craig Zillis of UIUC, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. So Craig, uh, let me now spotlight him. Give me a second. I'll spotlight him here and add spotlight. And I'll even unspotlight ourselves just to focus on you if that's all right. Remove spotlight and give it to you. Again. So, um, remove spotlight? Yep, remove spotlight. Here we go. There we go. So, uh, so Craig... Uh, and I met each other because I would, Craig and I, Craig has been part of the computer science education. He's a, Craig is a regular professor. He does research in architecture. Uh, and most recently, he's been working on how to make exams scale online. What, what's the future of exams? Could, you know, just like in a way, Piazza is in some sense the future of online forums and as it's Slack and, other, and Discord and other things, just like Gradescope and uh, is the future of exams with computers. I mean, future of kind of homework and, and, and auto grading and, and, and supporting that and scanning exams. Craig's really research is thinking about, and maybe Craig, correct me, is thinking about could we build a system that will allow us to randomly generate questions to allow us to be really creative rather than having to write exams every year. What if we put the time into actually writing question generators and packing them all together. And Craig's really cared about how would you then assess a campus? So he's worked on something called the Computer-Based Testing Facility or CBTF. And that's a space where students come to take these exams. So just like you're taking our exams on, by the way, just for FYI, the system that you are using for your quest and your um, midterm and your final is a system that, again, thanks to it's called Prairie Learn, and it's thanks to Craig and his team for building that Prairie Learn system. And Craig's cared a lot about building a, system, a place of actual physical location called CBTF on campus to allow people to go and drop in whenever they want to when they show their ID and they take an exam and they can take a range of time. You can have as much as you want to, or you can have a limited time, and there might be a list of things you can bring in. All those things are part of the CBTF to try to make this really rigorous. And what's nice about Craig is he's done research to show how effective that is, where he's seen cheating. It's really interesting stuff that Craig has done. And so Craig and I have known each other for many, many years, and it's great to have you here. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about how you got to where you are. Did you always know you wanted to be a professor? Tell, did you, where, where did you grow up? Where, where did you, what, bloop, when did the kind of academic bug hit, bite you? Um, yeah, so I, I grew up in the Bay Area, South Bay Area, just north of Santa Cruz. Um, I did my undergrad, actually, surprisingly, uh, my first two degrees were in mechanical engineering. I was the kind of kid that I, I didn't know that, uh, I didn't you know, know that. always was taking things apart and trying to put them back together. And, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so I studied mechanical engineering at MIT. And then uh, I did my master's degree in robotics, which I think of as the gateway drug between mechanical engineering and computer science. <laughs> That's true. Um, I then yeah, yeah. worked for a year and went to graduate school and studied um, that basically I worked for a year and I found like, oh, I really want to do more of this computing stuff. And I got interested in digital electronics pretty deeply. And mm -hmm. I realized that my background, even though I had taken a number of, of computing and electronics courses that I didn't have even, you know, a full degree. And so um, I went back to graduate school in electrical and computer engineering um, and ultimately transferred to um, computer science for my PhD, but mm -hmm. um, that I got uh, super interested in computer architecture there. So I did my, my graduate work at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which has a mm -hmm. very strong group of computer architects. Um, and so I did my PhD um, in computer architecture. And that whole time I was studying uh, my intention was to go and build processors to so work for the IBMs and Intels and mm, mm -hmm. back when there was digital equipment corporation and, you know, there was a lot more variety of, of computer companies back then. Right. Um, All on route, route, route 128 on the uh, Western yeah, part of Massachusetts, there's right? The, <laughs> the Massachusetts group, the, the West yeah. Coast group in Portland. Um, HP was in Colorado at the time. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. And so I actually, um, you know, I almost left with a master's and, and took a job and it, I had a very interesting conversation with um, one of my uh, mentors who was um, Joel Emmer, who is, who's now a fellow at Intel and, and actually is retired from Intel and, and teaches at MIT. Um, and he sort of said, you know, uh, you know, don't, don't necessarily be in a hurry to work in that, you know, when you graduate, you'll have 30 or 40 years to work that if you, if you want to get a PhD, um, take the time that there's sort of no experience quite like it. And, and that was, mm -hmm. um, you know, work will be there for you, you know, four years later, um, you'll still have plenty of time to work. So that, that was pretty compelling. But even then, most of the time I was, I was expecting to go into industry when I graduated. And so mm -hmm. again, there, there was a, a mentoring experience that, that some faculty that were on my PhD committee pulled me aside and said, we think you'd really be a, a really good professor. Um, mm. And so you should think about that. And so um, I guess my recommendation would be to seek out uh, people to give you advice um, about that. So, so I've taken sort of a, a crazy path from mechanical engineering through computer architecture. And now as, as uh Dan was saying, you know, a lot of my work relates to how do we teach, particularly teaching at scale. Um, so the the project that that Dan mentioned is really um, uh, focused on. So our campus, the University of Illinois, is, is the flagship campus for the state of Illinois, just like Berkeley is for California, um, and we are the second largest engineering school in in the country. Um, and so we have some of the same challenges that you guys have, which is we're a really good institution, but we also have a lot of students going through our classes. And so how do we maximize the quality and the presence of the number of students? And so our project, the, the computer-based testing facility was really about how do, we, how do we make sure assessment in the form of you know, exams and quizzes and things like that um, you know, meets the, the demand of you know, our large classes without losing a lot of quality that, that, you know, you guys know how much time you spend, you know, studying for exams, but you might not realize that how much time your professors and their course staff spend preparing and running exams um, that typically the model, you know, the standard model of maybe like two midterms and a final that that was pretty common with pencil and paper exams is because it's really painful for faculty and their course staff to, to run exams. And we thought, you know, that's really not good for the students that having these sort of big heavyweight exams, you know, relatively uncommonly was, uh, would be problematic. And so uh, we were thinking like, how could we sort of um, make this a better experience for our students? And that's sort of what led to us thinking about the computer-based testing facility. And so tell, tell me a little bit, you, so tell me if you're not going to give two midterms and a final, what do you do? How, how do you do, I mean, if, and by the way, you teach a course, I understand CS233, very similar to 61C. It's almost exactly the same course. Um, it was MIPS and we do risk five, but we also did MIPS about four or five years ago. So we actually almost taught the exactly the same course. Tell me what you do in your, in your vision of, of, of assessment. Yeah, so, um, so there's, there's two main things that we do. One is we do very frequent testing. So basically every two weeks, we run a 50 minute midterm. Um, and this starts in like week three or four of the semester. And so the first one, you know, it's, it's, you know, the idea is that we want to frequently test you so that um, if you find that you're falling behind, you get that feedback early. That what we don't want to have happen is that your first exam is in week six or seven of the semester. And by then, if, if you, things aren't going well, you know, it's, it's, it's insurmountable to catch up. So we want to do frequent tests and give you, you know, constant feedback, but also um, then, you know, if we're, if we're doing frequent testing, then each, each exam isn't, you know, it's only like five or 10% of your grade. It's, it's not quite as scary and sort of the amount of studying you have to do is not as much. Um, and then the second thing that we do um, is we do second chance testing, which means that and, and I, I like the sound of that. I'm sure the students do too. Tell us more. The, the students love this. So what the idea of second chance, second chance testing is if you go in and you take an exam, as, as Dan mentioned, we use Prairie Learn, um, you get immediate feedback. So you know when the exam is over because um, we do auto grading on, on almost all of the exam. Um, 
you know how well you did on the exam. And so what we do is the, the following week, we run an optional second chance exam where if you want, you can study the things that you didn't do well, come back that, you know, schedule an exam that following week and take it and we do some form of grade replacement. Um, hmm. So do you do, do you do a full replacement or just some frat? Like, do you have to own some part of the exam the first time or can you kind of get a zero the first time and ace the second one and somehow get, you know, an ace by, by, the, by the two of them? Yeah, so it's so a different, this is actually one of the things that we do research on is, is understanding mm. these policies. What we found is that, and I'm sorry to tell you these students, but this is, this seems to be true, uh, <laughs> is that if, if, if there's no penalty for, oh, uh, there's no consequence uh -oh. for doing poorly on the first exam, people uh -oh. will tend to blow it off. Um, <gasps> there's a, yeah. It's no, because we have we have you know, we have a full replacement policy here in our class. It's called the clobber policy, and if you know you do better on a later exam, but only on the same question, like you know the later the midterm might have one question that was on the previous exam. So if you ace that one, it's a full. Re we're doing a full replacement. Usually it was a curved replacement, but this year we're we're going to do a full replacement. So if you whatever your grade of is higher, it's it's higher. If it's lower, it's okay. It's just averaged in. But if it's higher, completely replaces the earlier one. But you're saying that people don't study for the first one. I'm saying that some people don't. So mm. we mm. definitely see, you know, we've, we've had instances where people just don't even take the first one if we, if we use that kind of policy. Mm. Um, mm. So we like to have some skin in the game for the first one. Cause I think the, the, what the research suggests is that some of the benefit of second chance testing comes from taking the, you know, studying for the first exam, taking it, getting the feedback of what it is that you still don't know, taking mm -hmm. that feedback and studying those things and coming back and demonstrating, you know, that you now know them, that, that right. have, going through that cycle twice, um, right. you know, rigorously that uh, is important. So, so I actually started doing second chance testing when we were doing pencil and paper and we were grading everything manually. Oh. Um, and that's a lot uh, of work. Wow. It's a lot of work. And so oh basically my gosh. at that time we wanted yes. to, you know, there, you know, there was a consequence of a student if they just didn't study and they went in and they took an exam, mm. uh, you know, just be like, hey, you know, if I can get by without studying, great, you know, and I totally right. understand you student, you know, you know, your desire to optimize your life because, you know, you have three or four other classes that are going mm. on. Um, and they and they don't have that policy. That's the that's the danger, right? You're the one who's soft and squishy with your policy. They don't. So they really have to study for those classes. Then they come to you and say, you know, I'm going to lean on you to not, you know, to borrow time from your class for their class because that is, a, is a, you know, no re, no retakes in that sense. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Because yeah, you know, everybody's an optimizer, right? And and actually, right. this is you know, you know, tying this back to computer architecture that you know this is, you know, that that's very much what computers, you know, the way we design you know, computers is, is all about sort of optimization problems of like, okay, how can I, you know, given a finite amount of resources, how can I do the best with those available resources? But so, right. so I don't, I don't fault any student from being optimizers, but it just means that there's pressure on us as educators to design policies that, you know, uh, get the behavior that's going to be most beneficial for the students. And so what we found is having some amount of skin in the game of the first exam. So, you know, mm. an example policy that, that people seem to like is 10% from your lower score plus 90% of your higher score. So it's, it's almost mm. Mm. complete. Um, clobber. Yeah. Yeah. Complete clobber, but not perfect, you know, so, so that's what we found. And, and uh -huh. overall, what's the reaction? Mean, I'm sure the students love the retakes, but overall, do the students appreciate? Because there's some things, it's funny, I have this theory, which is there are some things that are better for students, but it's like broccoli. Eat your broccoli, and it's even though you're not going to like it, you're going to tell me at the surveys you don't like this, but it's better for you. It's better for you to do the reading and force you to the reading before you come to lecture because you'll get more out of lecture. So it's, ah, I don't talk about it, but they don't do it. So Aside from the retakes, I'm sure they love, what do they think about the more rapid assessment versus the bigger high stakes things? Do they, do they appreciate having an exam every two weeks? Is that overall? Because it sounds like you do, they do better at the end. That, that's like from the point of view of better learning, that's, that's better. But what's the student perspective on that? I think uh, they, 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 in general, like it up to a point. So hmm. um, like they, there's no break. It's like, I got an exam every two weeks. I can't right. no break here. Right. right. Um, and I think especially if you imagine that, you know, you're starting to get three or four of your classes that are testing frequently, um, mm. it can be fatiguing. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I, I think um, so that's that that is a concern, but in general, mm -hmm. students are very positive about smaller, more frequent assessments, right. especially if, if they have flexibility. Um, so so our system back before COVID, um, we have a physical space. We have a couple computer labs on campus and we give students a three day window to make a reservation and they come in, they take their exam whenever it's convenient for them. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's another feature that they really like is because, you know, if if you know, if their psychology class has an exam on Thursday, they can choose to take the exam in my class on Saturday instead of, you know, the Thursday that I would have run it on. Mm -hmm. uh, so they get to pick a time that's convenient for them. And then another thing that they like is, you know, uh, picking the time of day, like some, some kids work well at 9 p.m. and they'd like to take their exam then. Other people, you know, want to get it done at 10 a.m. in the morning. And so having that flexibility is really uh, beneficial. What do you think about having untimed exams? And we had a 24 hour window to take an exam that was some number of hours for some people. And here we're now gonna have a 48 hour, 48 hour window for our midterm. And we've, we've played with it. We played with having, you know, basically untimed 24 hours exam. And the second one we're actually trying, we're gonna talk about this and maybe limiting that time per question. We'll divide up into questions. So what do you think about the trade off between untimed versus timed exams in terms of that? Um, so, uh, you know, I, I strongly believe that you should have enough time for the exam. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the, the other things about, you know, like why we are interested in frequent testing and early testing, you know, uh, relates also to sort of having enough time that one of the things that we want to be true is that we want your score in our courses to be dictated by how well you understand the material, not necessarily by how good your test taking skills are. So mm -hmm, we don't want to mm -hmm. design exams where, you know, oh, the right way to take the exam is to skip the first three problems and do problem four. Then if you have time, right. go back, you know, right. like, right. you know, right. so you right. know, definitely having enough time set aside for your exam, I think is super important. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely a point in, you know, for a bunch of students where uh, they've done what they can, but they still have 20 minutes left. And so they stay there for 20 minutes. And, right. you know, my, my, one of my concerns would be, you know, uh, is this a, an extra burden on those students that feel like they should spend more time, even when it's not being productive? Um, I guess the other concern I have, um, you know, one of the things that the literature suggests that is a mitigation for uh, cheating in online ex exams is, is having time for them. Um, so if that is a concern, I know no, none of the students at Berkeley have ever cheated in history. So that's uh, true. Actually, I was going to bring that up. T tell me, you've done some in, in, in research into cheating. Tell me what you found. CBTF is a place where you could guarantee as much as you can that cheating wasn't happening because there's somebody watching the space as a staff member, you're in a booth and a kiosk and it's just you and nothing else and whatever you are allowed to bring into that exam calculator or whatever. Um, but now that you can't go to that place and you're kind of asking these students to take these exams at home, what are you doing in terms of, is it, is it an honor code? Are you having them bring a camera? Are you recording the space or what, recording the screen? What are the, how are you managing cheating? Cause cheating is a reality, even though we know no one you know, has ever cheated before either. What are the, what are you doing at least to make sure it doesn't happen in the future? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's uh, I think preventing cheating is, in online exams is, basically impossible so actual prevention so we we go for a number of mitigation strategies um so we we've instituted so since we can't run the physical cbtf um a group of people have organized what we call the cbtf online which is uh some zoom proctoring so we do have uh people that are um you know one to many proctoring um the, so that's one thing. We're not trying to, to lock down the machines. I think one of the big things that we do is, as you mentioned earlier, we do a lot of randomization on our exams. Um, and mm -hmm. this sort of came from uh, when we were started running exams asynchronously that, you know, the thought is, is if you let different people take the same, the exact same exam at different times, then student A goes in and takes the exam, comes out and talks to student B and, and student B has an advantage over student C that doesn't have friend A. Sure, um, so sure. if we if we randomize the exam so different students have different questions, then um, it means that it's you know very difficult. You're you're more dependent on sort of what you know than what other people have told you, and and it also means that we can give out you know practice exams um, that are very similar in structure to the actual exams. Sure. Um, 
So uh, heavy degree of randomization is, is I think one of our keys. Uh, this semester we've been running synchronous exams um, to try to, you know, mean that at least students in the class at the same time have to be focusing on their, uh, their exams rather than potentially helping other students. Um, but right. yeah, we don't- No, it's hard. I mean, hard. We, we, we've got to support multiple time zones. And so all of that with 1200 students has been just a challenge. And so we're mostly leaning on the honor code and doing what we can in terms of randomization, some other things we can to, to try to, to help with that. Tell me the things you're excited about. What are the kind of, where, where are you kind of cutting edge research? What, 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 the next five years, this is what we always ask any, any candidate for a faculty candidate. What, what are you excited about in the next five years of in terms of AI mixing with Prairie Learn, mixing with CBTF, but what, you know, what, what, what's the space? What, 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 what gets you up in the morning? Yeah, so um, I've been recently teaching one of our CS1 classes for, for, for Berkeley people that um, this is close to the CS0 that you guys teach, the beauty mm -hmm. and joy of computing. Um, and uh, I have a couple things that we're working on there. We've been focusing on a very uh, reading before writing kind of curriculum. And one of the key things there is the, the research literature in, in learning to program suggests that um, being able to read and explain code in English is a, is a step um, is a building mm. block step to actually being able to write code. Mm. And so my group has developed um, a natural language processing um, system that allows us to present pieces of code to students and have them type a description in English and automatically score that. Wow. Um, wow. So the, it's kind of the pseudocode, like kind of describing the pseudocode in English. So you're kind of saying it. Well, it first right. grabs a number, but are, are they doing like, because when I've asked students to do this, they, they go step by step. They literally read, well, this this one, four, I, like they're, they're not able to step back and say, no, I don't care about the four. I tell me that you're iterating over the list and doing something, but they, they right. can't do that at the early stone. So what, what are you finding your students are doing? Are they line by line or are they able to pull back and, and, and say? Right. And well, so, so uh, we've trained this auto grader to, to not give credit to the the low level description. So wow. as you, as you, as you wow. say, our goal is to, you it's know, impressive. We, we want them to see the forest for the tree. So it's like, right, oh, right. this is, you know, this, this function is, is taking the, and making a new list out of the, um, you know, even numbers that are, you know, in the provided list. Um, right, 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 right. How many regrade requests are there? There's some. It's not perfect yet. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's still research. Um, it's about 90% yeah. accurate, which is really good for homework. Um, we've put it on exams, but every time we put it on exams, we have a human go through and make sure yeah. it doesn't make mistakes. Um, yeah. But I think the, the key thing is, you know, and I think the whole point of automation, you know, the power of automation is that, mm. um, you know, anytime a student wants to study, they can get immediate feedback on their yeah. work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. you know, to me, it's, it's almost a more important formative tool than, you know, actually definitely. putting it on exams. Definitely, definitely. Um, There's a question, actually, it's a very good question from Benjamin, uh, who's also asked good questions in the past. He's saying, for a heavy degree of randomization, how can you ensure that each given exam is the quote unquote same difficulty? Um, you know, since it seems the same question with different numbers and parameters would be easy to randomize, but also make cheating easier. Whereas truly randomizing the questions could lead to differences in difficulty of the exam bef between students. Boy. This is a great question. It's a and, very good question. And it's, it's something that we studied. Um, so I think the, the key thing is, is it, we're not perfect. We admit we're not perfect. Um, mm. the, our goal is to um, be at least as good as semester over semester. So, so mm. historical mm -hmm. practice is in fall semester, Dan would write an exam and spring semester, Dan would write a different exam. Right. And, right. you know, right. those exams wouldn't be perfectly fair. So maybe if you took it in fall, you know, Dan wrote a slightly easier exam and, right. you know, versus his spring so right and, um, and even within a question like my sts question might be easier synchronous digital systems easier in the fall but the cache is easier in the spring like you know that's even right. there's some variance even right. within there's, the there's question there's going to be yeah. some variance and so basically right. we're translating that variance that used to be semester between semesters to within a semester mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and so that that variance is there um we studied it uh it's, you know, sometimes we make mistakes and, and we, we need to fix them that, you know, I've definitely had the case where, you know, a problem that had a, a, an average score of 37% was in the same pool as a problem that had a 70%, you know, average. Wow. And we're like, wow. Ooh, 
something wow. bad happened, you know, so, yeah. and so how do you correct it? Do you just throw it out? I mean, that's the hard one. Do you um, bubble it up? Just double the, the, the double the lower one. To, yeah. So, so I mean, one of the, the key things is, is I tend to have many, many questions on my exams. Um, and that's uh, another thing that, you know, makes me, helps me sleep at night um, is mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a bit of central limit theorem going on is that if you ask enough <laughs> questions that even if law of large numbers, law of large numbers, you know, that, um, yeah. That, you know, you're going to get some hard ones and some easy ones and somebody else is going to get different hard ones and easy ones and, and ah, it's, it's going to, to it's work, work out. out. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we do that. Um, one of the things that I'm looking to do going forward is, um, you know, the there's something called uh, item response theory that when yes, you indeed take, IRT. Yeah, I, yeah, I served on the college board for develop and we spent I, mean, I, I learned that from them. I was on the meeting. I had no idea what it was. And they said, let me teach what item response theory is. And I learned, wow, this is so cool. Most right. people don't know this. So you didn't know this yeah. in teacher school, you know? So, so, so all of you took some exam like the SAT or ACT in order right. to get into college, or most yep. of you did. Um, in general, those are different exams, but somehow they uncovered, you know, a score for you. It's, it's not a particularly transparent mechanism. And so I don't think it's the main mechanism that we want to use when grading students because students value transparency. Um, but I think as a background mechanism of like, let's go ahead and run this in the background. And if somebody got hurt by the main mechanism, we'll boost their score up to what mm. IRT mm. would have said they, they should have gotten. So mm -hmm. you know, if you are that one person out of a thousand that gets really unlucky and got, you know, hard, you know, more than the average number of hard versions, you know, we'll bump you up at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we're thinking about. Go ahead. We, we spent quite a bit, we, we, we thought about this. I mean, what happens if you discover this in, I mean, in, in grade scope that we have very different um, outcomes and scores. So our approach was that we are going to go ahead and renormalize somehow, but we'll see, you know, we, we are not hoping that, we are hoping that we are going to make our exams perfect for now. Right. But we are preparing <laughs> and, and, for, 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 and for actually, just for, just perfect, for the students, yeah. this, we you know, 77 students here on the, on the call, we actually threw away, we, we wrote, uh, I think, seven boroughs, it was seven different versions of uh, this, the, the, the question, the second programming question, section three, the splitting question. Um, and then we threw away three of them because they said these aren't the same difficulty. So we already have been thinking about it. And we already decided that only the bottom four are, or whatever, some number were the same. And so we, and we, we made some more that were variants. But the point is we threw three of them away because we said, you know, these are definitely, and actually I want to give CC credit. Our, our, our head TA, CC, uh, came up and said, you know, Dan, I don't think one, two, and three are the same as four, four through seven. So let's throw one through three away and not use them. So I thank her for, for thinking about that. But that's, that's an issue. And the and they're perfect practice questions for going forward. I mean, once when we use yeah. all of that in the exam, they're, they're good for, for practicing. I mean, we don't have to be completely fair. I, I'm getting, I mean, there is not the same scrutiny when, when we give something, uh, give practice. out as a practice question. That makes sense. Yeah, that and makes we sense. definitely have pretty hard ones also. <laughs> I'm not going live in any exams <laughs> anytime soon. I have a Frank, quick I question and then I love we'll this. let you go. Yeah, I love this natural language. I just want to say I love the natural language at work. That's really exciting. I'd love, I love to see it at yeah. Sig C or any other conference. I want to see some results from it. That's wonderful. There's a, there's a paper that got accepted to Sig C. On, on hey, Friday. congratulations. Yeah, it was a good year. Right. It's a good year. Any more questions? I'm listening uh, from there. I, I have a quick. I have a quick question. Uh, I mean, the the, the this, this is uh, uh, a different different thing. So I, I'm assuming some of our students want to go to grad school. Um, so how do they get? Do you have any tips? How how could they get into UIUC? Um, we heard UIUC is good in architecture. Yeah. So so we're 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 good on a number of things. Um, we have a, a very strong uh, computer education group now. Um, mm, it's true. Uh, we got Colleen Lewis. Got uh, Colleen Lewis. Lewis, our own student. Yeah, she's yeah, one of our all-stars. Former Berkeley grad. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, she's amazing. Um, yeah, like, so I think the, the key things um, I would recommend um, applying to grad school. So, um, you know, one of the, the biggest challenges of, of computer science is it's so big. So trying to figure out what it is you're interested in um, is, is a challenge. I think that's something that you guys as undergrads need to figure out sort of as you work to your elective courses, um, but get to know faculty in that area. So um, letters of recommendation are super important that, you know, mm -hmm. what, um, what grad schools are looking for is somebody who understands what research is that can sort of say, oh yeah, this, this person has the characteristics that 
means that they're likely to be able to do research and whether that the person says that because you've done research with them or because they've seen enough of you in other contexts that they can say that that's what you're looking for. So I think, you know, making sure um, that you are making some relationships with potential letter writers early. Um, and then the other thing that, you know, faculty know is um, if you, if you say, hey, I'm interested in this subject, you know, what are some interesting schools? Because, um, you know, not every school is equally good in, in every dimension, you know, not, you know, again, CS is, is so broad these days that not every department, you know, nails it in every sub area. And so, you know, finding the faculty in that area that you're interested to, to be able to tell you, oh, okay, here's, here's a list of schools that are, are particularly good in my area that you should be targeting. Um, because it's, it's just like undergrad, when you're applying to undergrad, there's just so many places and like, how do you make sense of, of all that information? Um, the applying to grad school is, is a little different um, in that, uh, it's who you want to work with, really. It's, yeah, it, it's a lot of <laughs> yeah. who you want to work with. But I, right. I think one of the neat things is that if once you get admitted, a lot of the schools will invite you out um, and you'll have mm. an opportunity to visit. And that's just sort of a, a super unique. It's, it's almost the time where you'll get more interaction with faculty than, you know, per unit time than any, <laughs> almost any other time in graduate it's school. True. And so, it's true. so taking advantage of, of that opportunity and, you know, when faculty that are trying to recruit you to come there, you know, ask them questions like, what do you, what do you think are the important problems in, in this mm -hmm. discipline? You know, what, what should I as a, as a new graduate student be thinking about? Definitely. Um, definitely. Wonderful. All, all right. right. Thank you, Craig. Thank you so much thank for you. taking the time. It's always a pleasure. It's always great to see you. And thank, thank you also you. for what you've done for Prairie Learn and all of us doing these online exams. Thanks to your work and your team's work. Thank Outstanding. You. Let's give folks a hand. Thank you very much, Craig. Woo! Thank you. Good stuff. All right. Take care. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks so much. Oh, my pleasure. Wonderful. Thanks for the invitation. All right. Yes, indeed. All right. Back to the main program. Back to the main <laughs> program. All right. We're back to here. And I'll remove Craig's spotlight. Perfect. Okay. All right. We're back. Yeah. So, Bor, you want to take us through this upcoming schedule? It's a fun week. Yep. Um, so what we got here? I, I need my uh, glasses over here because my, <laughs> small font, small my font. computer is misbehaving. No, yeah, no my, behave, my computer is misbehaving, so it doesn't want to project on a big screen, or I have to disable that, and That's otherwise right. I can. And as you, if you've noticed on the recent videos, I'm not scribbling because I can't. I need to, you know, it, it's refusing to do that. Oh, <laughs> it's connected to another annoying. screen. Uh, yeah, it is totally annoying. So, um, where are we now? I released one lecture on pipelining. Uh, I am hoping to get the other one out tonight and the other one later, the, the Monday's lecture. So, the Wednesday lecture is has been released, I think, on Saturday. The Friday's lecture will go out today and in the next two days, we're going to have also the next Monday's lecture. And that essentially finishes all the material till, you know, for, uh, for the uh, midterm. So you have almost two weeks to, to sit on that material and digest it and make sure that uh, um, you're comfortable with it. Uh, we have one more lab that is pipelining that is preparing you for a second part of the project three. And uh, that's a pipelining lab. Uh, it does take a bit of a time and get ready for that and, and use it to your benefit. Uh, there is no lab next week. Um, just prepare, you know, use that time to get ready for the midterm. Okay. And that's, that's all. It. Yep. That's and it. there is homework. By the way, the homework that we have out now is going to take, we shortened it a bit. We took out one question is left as an optional. That was like a 20 minute, half an hour question. But the, the homework is still going to take two to two and a half hours. So budget for that next between this week and next week. But the questions there are good. The questions are uh, uh, totally make sense um, from the uh, as a preparation for the midterm. Yeah, I was just saying, I can't think of anything, any better way to study for the midterm than until they do the homework. <laughs> we always suggest that. Great, great yeah. stuff. All right. So we've got some announcements. Uh, let me click on that. All right, so Quest regrades finally done. Holy moly, I have never seen a regrade 
that was as painful as this one. We had virtually one in four students needed to talk to us with a lot of, it wasn't just like, I want points on this, but it was like, there was some technical or some this, or that on all those things sometimes actually required us to rerun. We would make a change and then rerun it on everybody's. And so all those things, anyway, it was painful, but thanks to a great set of TAs who helped coordinate all that to make it work. So about a one out of four every four students, which I think is the highest fraction of regrades we've ever had. And so that's why it took us so long. So but thank you for your patience with us. We've got a final date. We've got a quest retake this Sunday, 24 hour period. It's going to be exactly the same. We can't make it, you know, as much as we want to give you test cases, we can't, it has to be exactly the same to be fair to anybody who just had trouble with technically with it and needs to redo it. So that's the idea. Um, I was just looking here. I've got my, there's a whole thread on Slack where my staff is right now working through all the students who had challenges and who, what the scores were. And we're going to, we won't make everybody do it, but we're going to try to figure out the final list by Tuesday. So you're going to let you know by Tuesday, just don't send us mail. And by Tuesday, we'll send it out. We'll send a big piazza post saying, here are people who need to take it again. And then you just do this, but it's essentially the same. You're already past the material. You're it's all, hopefully the C is already deep within you. You know, all the you know number representation and all that, by the way, is great preparation for the midterm. So it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, hopefully you don't have to do any extra studying. You're just basically studying for the midterm and kind of refreshing yourself. That material is also fair game with the midterm. So you're studying for this in general with this stuff. But we'll let you guys let you guys know. And that'll between Tuesday and Sunday, hopefully there's enough days for people to get some time to do whatever prep. And also, by the way, it's open notes and open book. I mean, <laughs> I, by the way, Boy, I would tell you the story. I, I My first semester teaching at Berkeley, fall 2000, I said, I'm going to shake it up here. I'm going to have an open book exam, untimed, like literally untimed. I started at 7 p.m. in Wheeler, okay? And <laughs> this is, ready for this? this, is the crazy thing. So I look around, and by 7 p.m., by 11 p.m., there are people still taking it, four hours in, like for a one-hour exam, okay? But I gave them infinite time. And it's 11 p.m. And the, the janitor comes in and says, I got to kick you out to clean it. So I took the remaining, this is a midnight, and almost 11 students or 20 students. And we walked, I collected their exams and they walked silently, single file back to soda. I found an empty room and they took the exam for two more hours. Now, that's a funny story, number one. First number two is after I headed the exam out, I saw somebody in the front and they took the book out and they went, Page one, and they started reading the book. Like they didn't actually, look. they just figured, come on, open. I got infinite time. You said infinite time. I'm going to read the book from page one. Page oh, one. Going, yeah. welcome, welcome to computer science. <laughs> it, was crazy. It, was, it was, don't do that. Don't do that. That's my advice. Don't do that. All right. Yeah. So we also have information about the midterm. All right. The midterm is scheduled. Thank you, everybody, for voting. What, what days work for you? Um, Sunday and Monday are the days people say we need a day, by the way, this exam, we think the exam should be doable in about two ish hours where that's our current thing. And in fact, we're so confident about it that we are that's going not 14, to, it's two. Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 we are so confident about it. We are going to have every TA who beta tested. And if the T we think I want the scale factor to be four. But I, maybe you'll argue the scale factor to be two. But if I tell you two hours then every TA should finish the entire exam in an hour. And I don't think that was true for the last quest that they could do it in half an hour. So I want it to be at least two, if I could have them finish it even earlier than that. So we're going to say whatever we have for the TAs, we're going to end up multiplying that by some factor to give you more time. Here's the idea. you got five questions. Many people said, don't give us infinite time. We will take 48 hours, limit it in some way. But we also know, you, talk, you, saw, you saw from the conversation from Craig, it's appropriate to give people enough time to show what they learn. I don't want to have people rushing through and not be able to finish. That's not appropriate either. So we're thinking, what's the middle ground? Roughly, we're going to write it so that's about 20 minutes a question. So it's about a three times scale factor for five different questions. So each question can be done in 20 minutes. If not, if our TAs can't do it in 10, at least a factor of two. If our TAs can't do it in 10, then I'm not going to have an hour. I will give you more time for that particular question. So there's five different sections. I should say five different sections. I should have edited this. Such as sections. Just like before, we had three sections. There are now five sections. Each section will have a time limit, and we're going to basically have all the TAs take it, figure out what they can take it, and then triple that time or something, and that's how much you can take it. So we'll make sure that you have enough time so the time isn't an issue, and then that'll be the limit. So we'll kind of make both sides of the, of the, of the room happy. The side that says, don't give us 48 hours. We, we, we'll use it all up. Okay, we'll limit it. But the other side says, I need, I'm need i a slow test taker, which I am myself. I'll give you more time. I want to make sure that you guys can finish it in there. So that's the idea, okay? So 
it should not be a five hour exam, but we're going to give you one. And, you know, we'll, as I said, we'll make that more per question. If, if that particular question is too hard, you take it any time in a 48 hour period, you can start one question the first hour and then take a 12 hour break and take a next question. All the whatever you need to do, same as the, in terms of style and the topics are these five topics. It's going to be a quest redo, basically summarizing all that you saw on the quest. Everything up to kind of week, you know, three and a half or so when the exam ended, bloop, freeze that. That's one question. There's going to be a float question. There's a question. Is there, is there, a, is there a C? Yes. In the quest, is there, there a C? C? So yes, there is C. Here. So get ready to do that. I'm not, I'll make sure you're prepared for this. There is C. There's a risk five assembly question, which we're going to be able to do with some coding. And we're going to have a practice midterm. So you'll see what kind of thing it is. But you're going to be in Venus. We're going to ask you to do something and you'll code it in, in risk five. Um, that's that's the plan there. There also is going to be a data path control pipeline. That's this material. And there's SDS logic, which was last week's material. Okay. That's what I got. I'm, I'm with five minutes left. And that's the that's what I have for the plan. But I hopefully that addresses a lot of the concerns that the students had in terms of um, what's on the midterm, what's the scope, what it is. There's no more. It shouldn't be any more surprises. Okay. And by the way, we mentioned last week that we will be giving you test cases for your C and test cases for your risk five. So we're going to say, do this thing. And by the way, here's some test cases. And I told you last week, we're going to reserve a couple test cases so you don't just hard code those, those, those things in there. Okay. So we're going to try to make it so that the timing isn't an issue, but we got to make sure you guys can get above the bar in code risk five. You're above the bar and code some C. And again, the, I, we hope, we want, Bora and I and the entire staff want you to totally crush the quest one. The quest is going to be a full redo plus a curve thing. So whichever one's better for you, we'll do that. But we want you to crush that quest redo. And it's all in one question. There's going to be a lot of partial there. But again, folks, it's got to work. You can't give a C that doesn't work. If you give a C that doesn't even compile, that, that's, that, that's not going to give us, we're not going to fix your code for you. That's never, we've never done that for projects. We don't do that for exams. That's not different than we used to ask a quest. The quest used to be write this line of code and mostly if it give you, it's mostly right. No, you have the compiler. You have all the time. Get it working. Okay. So hopefully you'll have enough time for the C. Again, we're going to take all the TIs, run it through that question and whatever they take, we'll triple that or whatever. And that'll be the time you get. So we'll give you enough time to get that working. And, and Make sure we get it working. And keep these questions going. Keep, keep these questions going. I mean, we got the two questions. Is the grading testing the same um i not sure exactly what that means but we will provide the full test coverage right right if that is what is meant yeah right yeah we're going to still do the same um, thing we're not going to grade it live we'll pull yeah. it out of it drop it in grade scope write some auto graders to try to grade it so very similar way to do this there's a question, will the practice um, exam be we'll, reflective of we'll, the actual exam in terms of length and difficulty? The answer is no. We're not gonna, we don't have time to write a second exam and give that away. So we're just gonna give you like, here's the kind of question we'd write risk five, might be much easier. So it's not at all, I'm telling you no, no. The practice exam will not be the assessment of that. It'll be, you're gonna write something, but, but we're gonna make sure the practice one, it gets you practicing with, you know, with Venus and doing something. So we'll ask you to do something. It may be harder, yeah. maybe easier, but it was not gonna be the same. We're not gonna be able to write the full, I can't write all the float questions. I can't write all the things. All the things you saw, it's just too yeah. hard. Look at our old exams for that kind of thing. We're just gonna give you something to give us but, basically a rough, rough test of that. But the, the, the point here is it will test exactly the, the mechan mechanics of, uh, yeah. of the, it's, of the it's about practicing the mechanics. Is in it's about practicing mechanics, exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, if you had any trouble technically with your setup, I'm letting you know you have two weeks to get that debugged, okay? Whatever you need to do, practice with the Zoom. F plug your, f I can't tell you how people didn't plug their phone in. What are you kidding me? Plug your phone in, whatever you do, get an extension cord, plug your phone in, get it set. So don't, whatever you had trouble, whatever the cause was for the redo, you got to get that working. We, I, I don't know if we have time, but we had to write a second, we have to write a quest and then a quest retake. And a, like, we don't have time to write a, a midterm retake. We may not be able to do that. So you got to get this working. We haven't yet figured out what to do if people have technical problems, but we, we don't, you have to get the debugged. We, you know, we had enough time, quest, quest retake, midterm. You've got enough time to practice, practice, practice on that to get that stuff working. So get your AV, whatever you're doing, whether you're zooming or whether you're time-lapsing or you're moving, whatever you're doing, get it debugged, make sure it works, make sure it'll work for whatever the maximum time is. That's, by the way, another advantage of a time limit per question is, you know, I only have room on my phone for a time-lapse that holds an hour and a half. Well, if no question is more than an hour and a half, then you're fine. That's the kind of thing. So make sure you get that, that stuff done. Yeah, exactly. This was one of the reasons we also, why, why we limited the time. Um, there is a question. If we get 100% on the quest uh, redo coding question, does our quest score become 
Yep. Yes, it does. 100%. Right. First exactly. time ever. By the way, first time ever. We've never done that before. We've always done a curved thing where we compare you to your neighbors. And if you moved up relative to your neighbors, it was a curved way of doing it. Not this semester. That quest was so low. It's a full clobber 100% map. So we want you to ace that quest question. Yeah. Just rock on that. Beautiful. Yeah. And then, you know, that is due to us and due to this semester being uh, different than any other semester there have been. Love it. Yeah. So the second question, will the quest redo C have test cases or just the post quest C? The quest redo C, the quest redo does not. The quest redo has to be exactly as before. So unfortunately, no test cases for the quest redo. It has to be the same. If people can't get free test question if you get a redo, but you didn't get it when you took the real test. That has to be the same. But the quest re, uh, how to say this? The quest redo C on the midterm so the quest redo in the midterm will have test cases, if that makes sense. So not the one that's happening this weekend. That's the retake for the, for the video problems. That will not have test cases. But on the midterm, the quest redo coding question will have, and the risk five will have. So all the coding, we're going to give you test cases. And we're also going to, as I said, keep a couple ourselves so you don't hard code any answers there. Got that? All right, beautiful. Answered live. Um, so. I uh, don't know. Recording policies will be the same on the Quest. Basically, exactly the same thing. You'll get the same options. And by the way, I, I, I really encourage you, you have two weeks. I encourage you to try every option. First, try it time lapse, then try it the video, then try it the, the Zoom proctoring. Whatever that thing works, make sure it works. Beta test it, triple beta test it. Make sure that works. But yes, the same rough, rough policy as before. Is each section equally weighted? The answer is no. We have to think about that and think about that place. Usually what I'm seeing is like float is one lecture, but it's one question. That can't be the same weighting as the quest redo, which was like four weeks. And it can't be the same as risk five, which was probably four, five, or six lectures if you had them all. Seven up. lectures, six or seven, seven lectures. lectures. Seven yeah. lectures, right? I mean, that's crazy. So we, we can't, right? Because it's above, it's there, it's the machine. So we certainly are not going to have equal weighting, but we have to think about the balance of all that. And probably if you look at our old midterms, it's probably the similar weighting that we did before. Our qu float questions were smaller, you know, and other questions were bigger. So think about that. But it's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, the section will be labeled very clearly. The question is, will the sections be labeled so we can review the material before taking that portion exam? Um, yes, I mean, I, I'm telling you, hey, look, folks, ready? The topics are there. <laughs> the topics are right there. Yeah. See the bullet? Wait, where's my hand? Where's my hand? Right here. There's yeah. the topics. <laughs> okay. There's five yeah. questions, five well, topics. We're telling you what's on the exam. It's basically the whole, all the material up to now. So, so it's beautiful. Uh, yeah. So one thing to, to keep in mind, I mean, there are things that leak over uh, 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 a bit like, uh, you know, you, 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 in digital systems, you need to know digital systems in order to build a data path. Right, but, right. you know, it's, it's not, like it's a not stepping so stone. Isolated. You know, the, yeah, the, it's not so isolated. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But we, we yeah, but we tried yeah. it. We tried as much as we can put them there, but sometimes they leak over. He is exactly right. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Um, quest regrades. I don't know if the quest regrades have been released. The question grades are done. I just told my TA that they just finished them, but I don't know if they've actually pushed them back to release them back. But uh, but the question grades, from our point of view, are done. They probably have some a little bit of a job of churning it, adjusting it, and then pushing it back out. But thank you for that question. Good, 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 good. Uh, and by the way, uh, related to that, if we mess up any of the the the, if there is a surprise in your in your grade in the overall grade, do let us know because there are some things that have been um, regraded manually and we have had issues before right. with that so don't, don't get yeah. freaked out if, if some grade gets lower perfect all right so that one's all done um i don't know what the first one so it'll be hacker rank style where we can run test cases and see how many non-hidden ones pass yeah, the idea is we'll give you a, a you know we'll give you something that lets you check all some some basic maybe just maybe one test but it'll be a test at least and we'll give you that test to make sure it's there set it up you write your code and then run it at least through that one I would by the way I would run it on other ones because that might not test every case obviously but it's going to test enough kind of a san it's more of a sanity check there but we'll have some test cases and again we're going to have the real one that has a big problem does it do the big one that you can't see but but it'll be enough to give you a very good sanity check sense of that so that's a good question there we got that one. All right, keep on keep them coming. This is great. Um, uh, For the no, question, the what if we only know we did wrong? We did wrong, but we don't know how, how to, how to fix, fix it. it? 
Could we get auto grading test after quest redo? I don't know what that's asking. It's asking us to release I, the, the auto yeah, grade the, of the, tests. The, the, test, the test cases, yeah, yeah. Um, we may release that, with, let's think about it. We may release it after we do the quest redo um we because it might be a similar thing so we, we, we we'll talk about that it's a good question let's let's board let's try to remember to bring that up to see if we would release the, the test cases for that thank you for that question yeah. and um on the quest the sections are labeled one two blah 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 on the exam section will be labeled c for example because we first get from the start um i think i, I mean i don't mind i, I don't bore if you have opinion on this i don't mind labeling them sections one through five even calling it Quest redo question, float question, risk five assembly question. So you'll know what you're getting. I don't need. I don't think we need to surprise yeah. people. So I, 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 yeah, I'm we, okay to label we, them. We we can we, we usually label them. Uh, one thing though, right? I mean, there is this leakage. So you know, don't don't expect. Oh, we can't. You know, you can't, you can't ask us any digital systems in Datapad. <laughs> it is a digital system. Um, so so there will be a little bit of that. But yes, the main theme is going to be labeled. Yeah, I, I don't have a trouble with labeling uh, the main themes. Yeah, that'll be easier for that. There, there, there is a and question. Some students, and, and, and a, a handful, a, yeah. Okay, a handful of students actually didn't realize that there were three sections. So we're going to make it clear. There are five sections. Each label, make sure you finish all five sections. You're not done with the with the midterm until you finish all five sections. Thank you. Yeah, and, and we need to, to wrap up in a minute or so because yeah, yeah, there yeah. is another class, I think, sure. after us. There is a question. Do we have any extra credits for this class? And we do. Um, it's called the EPA. Um, Dan, do you want to ex explain? Sure, sure. We mentioned in the first lecture, EPA is effort, participation, and altruism. Um, there are ways for you to, to show excellence and show that you're helping other students. In the altruism case, you participate, you're coming to these sections, you're coming to these things, um, you're coming to office hours, people getting to know you, uh, and and you, um, E is for effort. So effort means you do every assignment, you don't blow any labs off. If you show that you really put your time into this class, there's ways to get that. Um, as well as if you take the performance, if you, if you try that, there's a chance for the competitions. If you submit a competition, it means you're putting that extra effort in. So we'll see that and we'll give you some extra bonus. So there's some extra bonus there um, with that. We'll, we'll play with that as well. Um, exact timings for each section will be visible before starting a section. Yes, I don't, I don't see a problem with labeling that so they'll know how much time to take for that. Because, you know, they set your timer, blah, 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 boom, got that there. Good question, Benjamin. I love that. That's a good portion. Um, Discord might be counted EPA if we can if there's a way for us to kind of get some numbers about it. There's some way for our for our TAs at the end. By the way, it's an informal, internal number. And if our TAs can get to know you through Discord, then certainly Discord is a useful as a mechanism to get to know you, just kind of like yeah, office hours. Very yeah. much so. I mean, we're going to ask our TAs to to tell us what 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 they've uh, um, yeah. who's bubble to the top about who's your, bubble to the top exactly. Yeah. Um, who is visible and. Uh, well, I'll save that one, right, Yoda, for, for later. Well, that's a little secret thing. All right. Um, good. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, right. folks. Thank you. Well, it's great to see you yeah. all. We'll see you, you next week. Glad. There was a lot of questions. This this is why we have these live yeah, ones. Yeah, exactly. This questions is exactly. We, are, we love that connection. You know, we love that connection. Yeah. All right. Thank I'm you. I'm good. And Thanks, we have folks. exciting, you know, more exciting uh, guests are coming. So get Ooh. your, get you know, people from industry coming. And there will be people from academia. And by the way, people have done very well in the project. So everyone's done. I mean, I know the quest was a challenge. We're hopefully going to replace it with the midterm. But I think folks are doing great in this class in terms of the scores I'm seeing on the project board. Have you seen those numbers in this row? The median is 100 for every <laughs> single section. For every single one. Project 1A, yeah. Project 1B, Project 2A, median is 100. Keep it up. We want that, folks. We don't need to. You know, we, I want to give you all A pluses. It's not about making a, you know, weeding you out. Come on, let's. You got to. We'll put a bar. If you all get above the bar, we're happy. We all did our job. So keep it up. Keep exactly. on. Keep help. Keep helping each other. Right. That's why we have you work together. Help each other. Teach each other. Learning community. We love it. All right. We'll see you next week, folks. Take care. Six two one C. Thank you. We'll see you, folks. Take Thank care. You. Bye. Bye.